Good morning, Jax. This is Fahad. Today is Tuesday, January 19th. Let's get started. So today I want to start off with this picture, uh, the nationwide COVID-19 metrics and the seven-day moving averages for each of them. There's an argument to be made as we look very closely that in just the past couple of days, uh, let's say in the past five or five to 10 days, we have started to see positive impact of vaccination with some of these charts are starting to show early signs of rolling over. Particularly the, the chart that I'm most interested in is the current hospitalization trend, which is right over here. As you can see that on January 18, it was 123,000, um, which was lower than the prior seven day average of 127,000. This dark blue line over here is the seven day moving average and it's just starting to roll over. This is the first ever you know, deterioration on the seven day moving average that we have seen since really beginning when this chart turned sharply positive back in September. And combining that with the, the daily deaths, we are starting to see potential, you know, start of rolling over here as well. We'll see if this is going to further come in for several more weeks to come. And then take a look at the daily new cases. Daily new cases hit an over you know, a parabolic high essentially of almost over 300,000. And the seven day moving average is now at 207,000. On January 18, it was 150,000. Some weakened effect is also potentially, um, you know, affecting all of these charts, but that's okay because we're looking at seven day average. And you can see this is a starting to come in too. My point here is this that are we in the beginning is phases of a potential end of the COVID 19 metrics, COVID 19 crisis? All of these charts can come in far, far, you know, lower. Essentially, we could see hospitalization, for example, come in all the way to 100,000, maybe 80,000, 70,000, right? Over the course of next month, two months, uh, four to eight weeks, essentially. As I said before in webinar a couple times now in the last couple of weeks, that there the the case over here, the base case scenario is that uh, we're going to get about uh, 20 million to 30 million Americans. Uh, vaccinated by the end of January. And then by the end of the first quarter, we could have as much as 20 to 25% of the population already vaccinated. Now, important thing is that as these charts come in and they start to roll over from here, what does this mean for airlines? That's the most important thing. Uh, Southwest Airlines, what does this mean for American Airlines um, and Delta Airlines and all of that? This is the group that travel particularly in the recreation particularly that is most impacted by all of these. Will it result in TSA checkpoint through starting to starting to go higher? And this is the group that is most depressed. At some point, market is going to start connecting the dots. If you start to see seven day moving average lower th tomorrow again and the day after tomorrow again, particularly the hospitalization trends, and you continue to see that over the course of next several days and weeks, at some point, you're going to wake up in the morning and you're going to open your platform and you're going to find out that these airlines are going to be up 5%, 10% that day because the institutional money will start to come in. And then you're going to see them rally hard from that time. You're going to see them possibly continue to rally for several weeks. And I think the same thing could happen to discretionary spending, particularly in restaurants, all kinds of restaurant stocks. And then the same thing will potentially spill into... Um, <clears throat> whole bunch of other areas, uh, the most weakest parts of the economy that all happens to be the Russell sector. It will also kick in, further improve the dynamics for the manufacturing PMI, as well as the services PMI. There's a lot, a lot of sectors and stocks that are affected by this. So watch these charts. Market has already started to price in some of them already. Um, into this optimistic scenario, but I think the actual evidence will also further support the argument for appreciation in some of these sectors. Now, with that said, I want to uh, touch on just a couple different stocks real quick with no significant one particular bulk or bear case on a single stock. Uh, a quick discussion on desktop metal DM. As some of you may remember last week in conversations, I presented a big bull case for desktop metal. You can pull that up from Jaguar Media and you can discuss it over there. So uh, I'm just going to quickly uh, uh, quickly pull up that video so you can see. And here it is. If you go to Jaguar Media, you search for dollar sign DM. You can see on January 11th, we discussed this. 
This morning, um, Stifel Research is out and they are initiating the stock with a buy rating and uh, talking about uh, pretty interesting, some tidbits of Catalyst as well as the, uh, the, the actual product description. So I believe that's going to support further rally in this stock. I'm looking for a breakout through 24 to $25 per share and a potentially new 52 week high pretty soon. Uh, they call this company a technology disruptor in the 3D printing marketplace. They're talking about there's very large and expanding market opportunity, which is driven by shift from prototyping to mass production based on 3D technology. The additive market is estimated to grow by 11 times um, uh, to, to 146 billion over the course of next 10 years. I understand this is a very, very long term view. Uh, uh, and then they also said that the secular trends of reshoring manufacturing and supply chain flexibility back to inside the United States will also present, um, you know, a further bull case for this stock and will be a, will be a tailwind. And then from a new product rollout standpoint, which is fueling the growth for this company, I would like to uh, quote over here. In fourth quarter 2020, Desktop Metal rolled out a number of printer product solutions and in the second half of 2021 is scheduled to begin shipments and volume of its production systems. A high-speed mass production printer that is designed for the, factory, for the factory floor. DM works with its blue chip customer base to provide 3D printing solutions. Customers include, include Indo MIM, Ford Motors, Volkswagen, Adidas, um, Metronics and Lockheed Martin. Ford is also an investor in desktop metal. So goes back to the point that I made last week as well, where this massive, very important product rollout happened just in the fourth quarter. That's when the stock started to perform. And then another major product rollout, which has to do with the solution segment, is a scheduled to begin shipment sometime in the second half of 2021. So what does this mean for the stock? This means because we are such an early phase of major product rollout and rising manufacturing PMIs of this bull market, this means that every single time when this company will report earnings or send a or issue a press release, the key component will always be on the order growth. What kind of order growth they're saying? Whether the, whether the book to bill ratio continues to improve, the timeline of these shipments to begin, the pricing for these shipments, it's going to be always about forward looking about what these products are doing. And that's what's going to keep a continuous bid under, these, under this stock. I understand that on a percentage basis, one may look at this and say this has already doubled in the past two months, rising from 12 to 24, but this is a potential disruptor and 3D technology stocks are very hot right now and they're benefiting from rising manufacturing environment. I don't think this has this is done yet. I think this is going to have substantial upside over quite a period to come in the next couple of years. And then one last stock that I will also discuss just briefly real quick is that keep an eye on this uh, small cap called Verit, Verit Nex, Verit, Verit X. holding, I'm completely destroying this name. Symbol VHC, just know the symbol VHC. Um, this, would, this could be potentially in play today. Um, this had a very high volume of spike on Friday. It ended up closing pretty strong after four or five months or more like six months of consolidation. Look for this to pop today again and see if it is enough to send us a stock all the way to a new 52 week high. Closed on Friday at $5.69. The reason for that is that there could be as much as $1 billion worth of total damages that Apple may have to pay to this company. A quick background on this one. According to 9to5Mac to this morning, a U.S. district judge, Judge uh, Robert Schroeder, this morning is denying Apple's request for a new trial along with a whole bunch of other requests. Now, back, uh, keep in mind that if you look at the chart, you will notice that previously back over here in, in May of last year, um, Apple saw that they were about to lose this eight-year battle. Apple projected that they were about to lose this eight-year battle, um, um, court battle with this company. So they wanted to pay 400 some million dollars to basically settle the case, 454 million dollars in damages. But this company is looking for 1.1 billion, and now the court has denied the 
the request for a retrial. This could potentially mean more money is coming for this company, VHC, and as a result, just purely as a tactical trade, this could potentially pop today. So one to watch after market opens. That's it from me. Let's go to Jay. Morning, everyone. Uh, so today on my list is Agilis, uh ticker AGYS. This is a, a leader in hospitality software solutions for the uh, casino industry, hotels, resorts, cruise lines, food service companies, restaurants, and universities. Uh, its software solutions essentially manage the entire guest journey. Uh, the company's next event is going to be next Tuesday when they report their Q3 numbers uh, after the close, I believe. Uh, if we go back to Q2, uh, we find that revenue increased 15% uh, sequentially. Uh, product and service revenue increased 25% and 35% sequentially. Uh, one of the major sales highlights between April and September that the company said was that it was the best ever in terms of average monthly SaaS subscription related sales. Uh, second major highlight that they said was that the sales of new products measured by annual contract value or ACV was up by more than 500%. Um, overall, in Q2, they added 10 new customers, 55 new properties, and 72 instances of selling at least one additional product to sites which already had one or more of their current products. Uh, some of the wins that they highlighted, uh, Lucky, Lucky Star Casino in Oklahoma, Paragon Casino in Louisiana, Caesars Entertainment in the UK. Uh, it also added a couple of new software applications, such as Guest Service and Guest Book. Uh, and then since that time, in November, December, and January, uh, the company has issued press releases indicating some additional customer wins, such as the Rochester Institute of Technology, who is replacing their existing food service system with uh, some of their uh, some of Agilis's, uh point of sales solutions. Uh, you've also got California-based Wind River Resort and Casino, and Arizona-based Blue Water Resort and Casino. So the wins keep you know stacking for this company um and then last week the company announced the hiring of two veteran european executives to rejoin the company and essentially jumpstart the growth outlook in the european markets uh, btig was out with a note after that news release uh, saying we view this renewed commitment and investment in the emea region as yet another solid data point for the foundation being laid for the recovery of the global hospitality and entertainment markets as the rollout of COVID vaccines continues and the industry invests in technology for the future. And that's it. Excellent stuff and a really nice technical setup over here <clears throat> for breakout as well. Um, you know, on Friday also, when the market was actually getting beaten up, this was holding rather very well, hitting new 52-week high on relatively high volume. Today, again, um, it seems to pop in, in, uh, in looking at just the pre-market action slightly. The MACD, the bull RSI bull crosses are also, also here. And this is not just an AGYS. We have seen some relative strength in IGT as well. International Gaming Technologies, which is a name that we have not covered in a long, long time, and some of these other uh, software providers as well uh, for the casino gaming and a whole bunch of other industries. So uh, nice, up in interesting note from uh, UBS as well. So I'm going to be watching this one closely, see if there's a, uh, there's a good reason to step in into call options going into this earnings on January 26th after market close. Good stuff. Let's go to Chronicle. Morning, everyone. Uh, today, I have a quick preview regarding the next major project for Jaguar Media. Uh, specifically, I'm going to be initiating coverage and doing a deep dive on the electronic gaming software industry. Uh, and the way this is going to work is I'm going to be covering and initiating on uh, 16 different companies to start with. Ten of them are currently listed in the U.S. Six of them are listed in Asia. I understand not everybody is going to be interested in Asian companies, and so I'm only going to be making videos for the American listed companies, but I'm going to do a report on each of the other companies um, eventually nonetheless. And the ultimate goal um, that I'll be working towards here is to publish one comprehensive document 
covering the global electronic gaming software industry. And the reason I'm doing this is because I find that a lot of the current financial research on the video game industry is too superficial and lacks nuance. And I can tell when authors are not very plugged in to the industry, which is often the case. And the other reason I'm doing this is because I think I can help contribute a lot of additional insight to the existing research because I'm personally very up to speed when it comes to industry developments and the gaming community. And so I tend to catch on to uh, potential market moving developments in video games, sometimes weeks or even months before sell side and financial media catches wind of it. So I know I have an edge here. But what my, I guess my main point is if anyone's into trading or portfolio management, but they're not particularly interested in analyzing or closely following the video game industry, then I can do most, most of the analysis to complement your research um, if, if this is not your cup of tea. So getting into the first episode that I'm working on currently. Uh, so this first episode is going to be sort of a high level introduction with the key industry themes to be watching out for in 2021. And I'm also going to be introducing the companies in my coverage. And, and then after that, I'm gonna start digging into the individual um, American listed companies in subsequent episodes. So again, I'm not going to be doing any videos for the Asian companies that are in the coverage, but I'm going to set aside time to do write-ups, um, hopefully for each of them. And then all of which is going into the eventual comprehensive document um, covering the global um, gaming software industry. So that's all I have this morning. Uh, good stuff. So this will be a brand new series that we're gonna start, right? On Jaguar Media, correct? <clears throat> Okay, and this is going to specifically target just the, the gaming industry, the game publishers. And as you had identified yourself, 10 to 15 companies could potentially be coming. So just to let everybody know that if you go to the Jaguar Media website and if you go to video series up on top over here, you can see that now we have four different kind of series that we're running. Naturally, morning conversations like the one that we're having right now, there's that. And then Jay started Jaguar Consumer just two weeks ago. We issued a public, we published a, um, another note on that, another video on that just yesterday covering Boot Barn. And then Jaguar Investing Series, which has bring you, brought you some, some of the greatest ideas from Chronicle, including Expel, including um, St. Joe, J-O-E, including um, you know, a whole bunch of other companies that I can think of right now. And then Chinese Tech Demystified, which is highly focused just on the Chinese technology. So now we're gonna have the gaming series that is also going to be coming. And then I myself have, uh, I have another one that I'm working on. Uh, I hope to launch uh, within the next month or two um, on Jaguar Media as well. So the platform continues to build out. Tremendous amount of content continues to continues to appear on this one. And I think that's the game plan over here that throughout during in the 2021, we're gonna build this into some really high quality, lots and lots of content. So uh, Chronicle, just let me know when you're ready to issue your first one and we'll run with that. Sounds good. Okay. All right, folks, we're going to stop over here. Thank you very much, boy. Uh, thank you very much for joining. The only thing I will say at the high level for the market is that you just want to be careful a little bit about this gap higher in the S&P and the broader market because Friday was a rather ugly day in the market, right? So if I just simply look at the S&P chart, you can see that the Friday was rather pretty ugly day. We're this is the S&P futures chart in front of you. We're bouncing here, right? But this is a... Um, early morning ramp into what is a major five minute chart VOP resistance now right around 3780 or 3790. It's going to be an important whether we're going to completely engulf the sell off that we saw in the prior two days or we're going to make a lower high and then start to roll over again. So just want to be mindful of exactly how this market may react this morning. But nonetheless, I believe COVID crisis are gradually going away and the setups are going to start to emerge in a whole bunch of sensitive um, names and sectors that have yet to run. That's it from us. We'll see you in the chat room shortly.